Hey, how's it going? We are in 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 28 and going through chapter 3, verse 10. So here we go. And now, dear children, continue in Him, so that when He appears, we may be confident and unashamed before Him at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of Him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that He appeared so that He might take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. No one, loves, no one who lives in Him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or known Him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. So there you go. Uh, amazing stuff talking about what it means to be a child of God. How much theology do we see in this section of Scripture? You know, there's some, but basically it's, if you do the right thing, then you're doing the right thing. You're righteous, you're of God. If you do the wrong thing, you know, you do the evil thing, you do the sinful thing, you're not of God. And there's no theological way to get around that. You know, we get your heart right with God and do the right thing. It's just that simple. Um, verse 29, If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of Him. So, God is righteous. If we're born of Him, His righteousness rubs off, off on us and we start doing right. You know, um, there you go. Verse 1 uh, into 2 just it's that identity of being a child of God. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Jump into verse 2. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. He's saying we're children of God right now, and that shows the love of God, and it's amazing. But there's going to be more. When Jesus returns, when we're changed at the twinkling of the eye, you know, like, it, it anyway, it's going to be amazing. But we want to identify as a child of God and give thanks to God for that. See that as who we are. Um, verses 4 through 6, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness, lawlessness, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in Him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or known Him. So these verses show that when Jesus takes away our sins, it's not just our past sins. It's also talking about the life that we're living now and into the future, taking away our sinful ways so that we don't continue in that. It isn't that keep sinning, get forgiven, keep sinning, get forgiven, keep sinning, get forgiven. It's be set free from sin don't have to keep sinning. That's the idea, you know, about the gospel. Uh, and then verses 7 and 8 help us to discern uh, false teachers. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Uh, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The devil's work is sin, hate, destruction, injustice, evil, all the stuff. Uh, but Jesus came to destroy that. 
So if somebody is doing evil things, but they claim to be a teacher of righteousness, that is a major red flag and you need to deal with that, you know. So let's pray. Let's pray to know God and be changed by the love and wisdom of God. You know, then we can be empowered to live right. One of the themes through 1 John is that it's knowing and loving God that changes us so that we can do the right thing. It isn't doing the right thing that causes us to earn the love and connection with God. Let's make sure we get that right. So let's pray to know God and be changed by the love and wisdom of God so that we can be empowered to live right. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you that we don't have to prove ourselves to you first, but you sacrificed for us, Lord Jesus, first. Now we are your children. Now we are loved by you. Help us to grab hold of that so that then we can live in that identity and we can be your children and we can live the way that you would have us to live, not trying to prove ourselves to you, but knowing your love for us and knowing your wisdom, having all that rub off on us so we know how to live in this life. So Lord, guide us with this, empower us to do the right thing, and help us to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen.